Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Mario So, and today we'll be talking about this feature on the Sony a7 IV. So welcome back to another video. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for other content similar to today's video. And if you're already subscribed, thank you again so much for being here. What you're looking at right now is focus map on the Sony a7 IV, which I think it's one of the most underrated features on the Sony a7 IV. Ever since getting the Sony a7 IV, I found focus map to be one of my most favorite features for my workflow and for the type of shooting that I do. You might be wondering why you need focus map if autofocus is so good on the Sony a7 IV, but there are a few reasons why you may wanna be using focus map and even focus peaking these focus assist functions on your camera. So for example, if you have a manual lens that you really want to get and it has a really nice look, very vintagey look, but it does not have autofocus, or maybe it's from a different mount and you need to adapt it to the Sony E mount, and you lose autofocus connectivity. Having focus peaking and focus map on the a7 IV, it makes it very easy for you to get focus once you learn how to use it properly. And you also wanna use focus assist functions on your camera, even if you're a photographer, sometimes if you wanna make sure that you're nailing focus in a controlled studio environment, having these tools on your camera is going to make your life easier so you don't miss that focus. Having focus assist features for macro photography or videography is going to be also very, very useful. When you shoot macro, the focus plane becomes razor thin. So even if you're shooting at an F8 or an F12, F14 for example, you're still going to get a very narrow depth of field and it looks like you're shooting at 1.2 all the time when you're shooting macro. So having focus assist functions is going to be greatly beneficial again. Before the a7 IV on a lot of Sony mirrorless cameras or other mirrorless cameras, we only had focus peaking to help us nail focus. So focus peaking has been very useful for me, but not without a few caveats. So for example, I found myself in situations where I was using focus peaking and I thought that I was in focus but the plane of focus wasn't very clear. It wasn't really showing me whether the sharpest plane of focus was for example, in someone's eyes or in someone's ear. And when I went back home and reviewed the footage on a bigger screen or the photos on a bigger screen, I realized that I was a tad out of focus on the eye. And because most of the time, if I'm not using an external monitor, I, I just have to go by the small screen. I can zoom in a little bit, but depending on the camera that you're using, sometimes the focus peaking is not as exact. I like focus map so much more than focus peaking because focus map gives you an idea of the depth of your image. So I'm gonna show you a few examples on how you can access this on the Sony a7 IV and how it works. So access focus map, you go to menu and then go to focus and then go to focus assistant and focus map. You can turn it on and off. There are no extra settings for this feature, so it's just turning it on or off. I've also set this on the Sony a7 IV to a custom button because I use it so much. So I have set it to this button right here, the AF on button. I'll show you right here. So it turns it and toggles it on and off. So I have a couple of items in the frame right now. So what I'm going to do is try focus peaking just to show you. So I have it set up to my function button and I'll turn focus peaking on. I'll set the peaking level to uh, to high. So that intensifies the peaking. Right now it's in yellow. So that is what's in focus right now. So if I change this to a manual focus, to rack focus between my lens and the lens cap, this is what we'll see. You see that the peaking level turns and disappears. What's in focus right now is the lens cap or the lens hood right here. But the outline, the yellow outline, even though it's already set to high, it's not very clear that you're focusing there as opposed to when you focus here on this lens. So that's one of the things that I don't like. I'm not able to 100% tell what's in focus, especially if I want something specific to be in focus. Or rather prefer to use an external monitor with better focus peaking capabilities to be able to do that. So now we switch now, turn focus peaking off, and instead of that, we'll be using focus map. Focus map displays whatever is out of focus, like a gradient kind of way. So if we look at this lens right here, this plane is in focus. I'm just using my finger to point over here, but the parts on this side, they are, they are less blue, not as intense. And as you get back further back down uh, to the background, they get more intense. So whatever is blue 
that's what's out of focus in the background and whatever is warmer. So for example, I have my hand right here. That is what is out of focus in the foreground. So that makes it really useful to see that depth of focus so that you can have an exact idea of what's out of focus in front of your subject and behind your subject. This is very useful to have. And whatever is not painted in by the pixels, either by the warmer or the cooler tone pixels, that's what's in focus. So right now you might see that, I'm not sure I can't see myself, but yeah. You can see here now if I tap on the screen and focus on the lens hood instead. Now this front part of the lens hood is now what's in focus. And because this is in front of the lens hood, this is what's out of focus in the foreground. And as you can see here, there is a gradation from what's in focus here in the lens hood. As we move forward to this plane, things become more and more warm. From They go from like a yellow to like a, an orange and to a red right here. So now we have a macro lens here, the Sigma 105, which is a really good lens. Right now I have my camera set to manual focus. So the plane of focus is super shallow right now, even though I'm, I'm at an F8 of an aperture. In normal circumstances, in F8, a lot of things will be in focus and I wouldn't have such shallow depth of field. But as you can see, this is what it looks like. And if I wanted, for example, to focus in this particular area, the plane of focus is really razor thin. And sometimes just looking at it right here from, from this LCD screen, if I don't have a monitor, it makes it very difficult. So with focus map, you can turn it on and you can have an idea where your focus is going to be. And like I said, because we're, ma we're macro, the focus plane is super, super thin. So let's increase that aperture a little bit more. Let's increase that to like an F20. So more, more of that plane is in focus now, but as you can see, we're severely underexposed because we lo lost a lot of light. So I'm just gonna bump the ISO. I would never shoot a 32,000 ISO on the A74 just to let you know, but for illustration purposes, I'm just gonna show you. And as I go through the depth of focus here and go through the different focus fields, you can see how useful that is to get focus, especially if you're shooting macro. Focus map does not work in photography mode, unfortunately, which is a big bummer. Right now, I'm trying to take photos of that leaf, that plant right here, and I'm not able to access focus map, as you can see. All I get is focus assistance and peaking display. So I have to go by peaking display, which isn't my favorite, but you have to use that for photography. Let me know in the comments below if you ever use focus map on the Sony a 4 and should Sony include this feature on all new and upcoming Sony cameras. Let me know in the comments below. All right, so that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. You learned something new. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're still watching, please hit that subscribe button. I know you want to. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.